So much of it is, is aesthetics. The, the beauty of the power of these houses that I saw coming out of um, Austria, Germany in the early 2000s was extraordinary. And what it really showed me was the power of timber as a beautiful aesthetic architectural material. But what kept me in timber was the origin story of the forests, its power to absorb carbon, and the history of this timber that we have barely touched upon in the 20th century. I was educated in the 20th century. It took us until 2010, 11, 12, maybe earlier in, the, in, in Europe, to even reassociate ourselves with timber as an architectural profession. It's been an extraordinary journey to think about the, the discovery and the origins of concrete and steel in the, in the early 1900s, late you know, 1800s, for, through the lenses of folks like Otto Wagner and Corbusier, when they, they were confronted with these discovered, newly discovered materials, and they were exploding. And all of modernism, I could say, has been uh, a kind of a flirtation and a deep dive and an intric intricate involvement with these very carbon intensive materials over the last century and a half. And what I see our journey in timber about is the undoing of some of those fascinations with these carbon intensive materials like concrete and steel mm -hmm. and a return to the origins of these beautiful materials that have been part of our architectural and cultural history for millennia. For our own welfare and our posterity, we must follow a sound plan of timberland management, planting, thinning, selective cutting, fire prevention, and other improved practices. Our forest needs to remind us where we come from and who we are, and that we have to take the teachings from our old ways, from our elders, from the Creator, and apply them to our new ways, the science and the technologies, and combine those tools so that we have a healthier forest, that we can deal with climate change, that we can deal with the fires, that we can deal with the bugs. And we take those teachings and we pass them on to our children so that they learn from our mistakes, that they are able to rejuvenate just as our forest does. It comes back and it grows and it's there to take care of us as long as we have to take care of it. In learning to just identify different tree species, I started seeing forests differently. Immediately understanding when I was looking at a monoculture or a multi-species forest right away, understanding even, I mean, I learned about deciduous trees too, but just really appreciating the properties of softwood conifers versus our hardwood deciduous trees and the wood properties. I had to start from scratch on that. I, I couldn't identify a dug fir 10 years ago. And now it's like breathing. There was this huge realization that we as the 21st denizens of this century needed to begin to understand the ancient origins of how to manage our forests more healthily. And that we had neglected, we as a family as that had neglected, but also as a culture had neglected in so many ways, these special, these, especially these private forests of ours uh, that were held in our, in our country. We had neglected them because of so many of the elements, call it the Northwest Timber Wars that had stopped a lot of emphasis on the logging industry. I'd grown up thinking that logging was bad that it was not environmental, when in fact, the logging helped propagate a life that could then sustain some of that forest management work, uh, if done in a careful, thoughtful, regenerative, and I'll even call it circular way of thinking. This is the land of the giants, the country of the big trees, and men of a size to match. This is the home of the treetop daredevils, who work and play among the kings of the forest. We're the Northwest unsung heroes, the backbone of this land. Where there walks a timber faller, we claim there walks a man. The rigging crew and the sawmill boys are always putting us down. But they can't log them and they can't saw them if we don't cut them down. Strong winds and widow makers, they don't bother us at all. We don't care what the weather's like, if it's winter, spring, or fall. 
We don't complain if the timber's smaller, if the ground is steep. Hard work don't scare us, we can lay right down beside it and go to sleep. Fire warden said, no smoking, boys, we can't burn up the woods. My partner said, try to chew this snooze, this stuff is really good. I said, can you get used to chewing that snoot? He said, I hope to shout. I took a big old chew and it turned plum blue and they had to back me out. Strong winds and widow makers, they don't bother us at all. We don't care what the weather's like, if it's winter, spring or fall. We don't complain if the timber's small or if the ground is steep. Hard work don't scare us, we can lay right down beside it and go to sleep. These saw repairs, they're getting us down, cause every day or two. Gotta take the old saw into town and have them put on something new. We get home late, a smell and a booze every time the saw breaks down. It ain't our fault there's a bar beside every power saw shop in town. Strong winds and widow makers, they don't bother us at all. We don't care what the weather's like, if it's winter, spring, or fall. We don't complain if the timber's smaller, if the ground is steep. Hard work don't scare us, we can lay right down beside it and go to sleep. One thing that's really important to my practice is that we understand as much as possible where our timber comes from. And one of the key things for that is to then to be able to commit to what I'll call the Cascadia bio. There's a sense of people being involved in these rural ecosystems that's really informing how we all kind of work together in this area and create building products that are again of the 21st century. operate about 16,000 acres here in Oregon and we have never cut to the point that we've hit our sustainable limit on our timber harvest because if timber is cut in Oregon you plant more trees typically between four and six for every tree that you cut down that's how you retain forest land for our future generations you're mindful of that forest life cycle and you replant
Timber is already different when you're optimizing the structure for material efficiency. Even if you're not, that timber tends to be reused on site, depending on the facility, but a lot of facilities do know how to turn even, even the fall off from a really high cost product like, like CLT or Gluam, turning that back into energy into their own plant.
What I've learned from the forest isn't so much how to work with the properties of wood that can be found there. It's more how to work in an ecosystem, how to work as a community and how to share resources, how to live with a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity. And that growth and decay are both beautiful and both need to be present for a successful ecosystem. And that's the same for a forest as it is for a city or for an economy. So tying all that together, to me, the more I learn about how incredibly balanced communication, resource sharing is in a forest, the more I learn how to apply those principles in my life and in my business and in my buildings too. And in the relationships it takes to create a building. It takes hundreds of people to make a building. When the foundation and subfloor were ready, framing crews followed. The 63-man barracks were designed two stories in height, 30 feet wide and 80 feet long. The cranes moved the entire length of the conveyors when necessary. Because of the efficient and practical design of this DeWalt production line, 21 saws in this line kept 2,100 carpenters busy driving nails.
Our forest is always talking to us. It is always telling us how we're doing with the promises that we have to keep uh, to follow our ways, to follow our songs, to follow the recognitions, to be responsible to take care of the land. And it tells us and it reminds us that we're not doing good. Whose garden was this? It must have been lovely. Did it have flowers? I've seen pictures of flowers, and I'd love to have smelled one. Whose river was this? You say it ran freely Blue was its color And I've seen blue in some pictures And I'd love to have been That it's true Whose gray sky was this Or was it a blue one You say there were breezes I've heard records of breezes and I'd love to have felt one Tell me again I need to know The forest had trees The meadows were green The oceans were blue And birds really flew Can you swear that it's true? was this It must have been lovely Did it have flowers I've seen pictures of flowers And I'd love to have smelled one 